Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Chris O'Rourke, and I'm surrounded by rolls and rolls of foam. And while it may not seem like much now, it will eventually go through a process that will make it recognizable to anyone who has been in a high school gym. No, you're not watching an infomercial, but a unique way of selling a wrestling mat. That's right, a wrestling mat. Paul Gilbert from Resolite in Northumberland drops an egg off a 15-foot ladder to demonstrate the shock absorbency of their classic mat. Time and again the egg is dropped, only to bounce a few times and roll to a stop. In fact, the only time the egg breaks is when a shoe intervenes. This technique of selling the mats was first used back in the 50s by Resolite founder Warren Tischler. He would travel to high schools all across the country tossing an egg up in the air to show how it bounced and didn't break on their mats. It was an example that left quite an impression on many athletic directors because Gilbert still hears about it today. Not surprisingly, it didn't take much more than an unbroken egg to convince schools that the new mat with its markedly improved shock absorbency was better for their athletes than the mat made out of horsehair and canvas they were using at that time. It was one of several steps Tischler made to market a mat that would revolutionize the wrestling mat industry and lead to its exponential growth. It also helped that Tischler was a wrestler who realized the potential of a foam mat initially produced in Sunbury. Actually, there was a, a sporting goods store in Sunbury called Bomb Sporting Goods. And they kind of, uh, and I'm not exactly sure how, but they kind of came up with the first prototypes. And Warren started selling for them in Long Island. And uh, through selling their product and figuring out the problems that, that they were having with it, he, he resolved those problems. And, and uh, then the owner of Bomb Sporting Goods passed away suddenly. And there was nobody to make the, there was no one to make the mats for him. So he came to Sunbury. And at that time, uh, he went into where Nye's Body Shop on Front Street is right now. He, he came and he rounded up a few guys that had been working for bombs, and, and that's basically how it got going. Um, th there were some problems that bomb was having with, with uh, uh, curing and with the coating that Warren figured out. And then he did a really neat thing. He, he went to wrestling coaches, uh, well-known wrestling coaches such as Harold Nichols at the time at Iowa State, and he set them up as dealers for him. And, and uh, by 1963, they were moving from Front Street in Sunbury into the building that we're in right now, um, and which has developed into about 100,000 square feet. Uh, so it was really, you know, the, the American success story of someone who really didn't have much and worked really hard. And, and uh, you know, he, he talked about when he was building the business how difficult it was I mean, just meeting payroll and everything as he was getting going, and he couldn't find banks to loan him money. And, and, but eventually, by 1974, he had paid all his loans off, and, and uh, we, were, we were well on our way to where we are today. And what this family operation is today is one of the leading manufacturers of wrestling mats. And unlike their competition, they offer four different types of mats. Reslite also makes 350 different types of gymnastics mats and products, cheerleading products, and even the apparently exploding market of Ninja Warrior practice products. Reslite just got into this market at the beginning of the year, and sales of this product are increasing month after month. Reslite gets its name from the combination of two words, resilient and light. Its classic mat is made out of foam, which is then coated on both sides with vinyl paint. They've sold more than 100,000 mats to schools across the country. The workforce here has grown from just six at the start to 70 now. It takes them about three days to make a mat with the assembly first, then a stint in the sprayer room, followed by a period of curing on one of many large racks here. Teams of six to eight employees work on the mat during each stage which also includes a relatively new feature here at Resolite, digital printing or digiprint. It involves a technology that's so new, we could only shoot a portion of what was being printed on this day 
so as not to give away one of Resolite's trade secrets. Um, this actually goes through a UV printer and uh, it, it prints on the surface. Then we send it through a UV top coater and it puts this clear coat over top that protects it. The neat thing about this is it, it shows where a standard mat, when you use it, it'll show scuff marks um, just from wear, where this really minimizes scuff and it keeps a really nice uh, glossy finish to it. And the, and the other thing, of course, is that we can print anything onto the surface. You know, if you have an idea or a design, and we have a graphics design team here that is very talented, and, and they, came, you know, they come up with different ideas, and, and so it's really exciting. When you show a school a, a mat, you know, with just plain Sealand's Grove wrestling and maybe have a two-tone, uh, and you show that to them, and then you show them this, I mean, these are a little more expensive, but it doesn't, you know, it, it is really spectacular. Resolite have been a two-shift operation, but went down to one, thanks to another product they make, lightweight wrestling mats. They're made with a different kind of foam and are only spray painted on one side, shortening the amount of time it takes to make one. Most wrestling programs choose classic mats for their training rooms and lightweight mats for competitions and tournaments. The classic mat surface is preferred for repetitive training, while the lightweight mats with an optional tape-free zip connector are preferred for scenarios when the mat will be set up, taken down, moved, and stored often. A normal wrestling mat would, would go together like this, and then you would put tape to hold the, down the seam to hold the sections together. With a zip mat, we've, we have a connecting system it's called a ResiLock connecting system, and we, we give you a, a lubricant, and you just slide the lubricant down the track. Now you're doing this on a large mat. Right. Um, you snap in one end, you snap in the other end. And then we give you a roller that all you do is you walk down the seam and this, this seam snaps together. And now you, you, your mat is a solid one piece. After testing the new connecting system, Resolite sent one to Southern Columbia, which tried it out for a few weeks in its wrestling room. Head coach Jerry Marks called Gilbert excited to buy one which told him they were onto something big. After several months of testing with schools, Resolite introduced it at various tournaments throughout the country, including the PIAA State Wrestling Championships, and officially launched the product during Fan Fest at the NCAA Wrestling Championships. It's really taken off since then. Despite selling thousands of mats and supplying them for state and college tournaments, Resolite did hit a rough patch in the 70s. The U.S. was in a recession, and their wrestling mat business backed off a bit. That's when Tischler challenged one of his sharpest employees to start a gymnastics division, which added to the company's growth. They started out with small folding mats, which were really for physical fitness, but soon had worked their way up to a full suite of gymnastics products. Gymnastics is a little bit uh, of a different animal in that there's, there's a, a large variety of mats that are necessary for the sport. Um, they, they give the athletes and the coaches the ability to choose different types of surfaces to land on depending on the types of skills the kids are doing. And talk about the different kind of mats, I mean, what? Well, the, the way that we approach our mats, we, uh, we, kind of, we put them into different categories. We have skill development products that are really foam products and they're basically made like a mat, but those products are designed to actually teach kids specific skills. Uh, so as they learn that skill, they start understanding, uh, you know, it's, it's all about repetitive training and memory. So when they do those skills, it helps them maintain the body position they need to be in to do them. Other mats would be uh, skill cushions, throw mats, competition landing mats. Those mats are designed to actually to take hard impacts. So they're dropping from a height and they're designed to absorb energy and help the athlete and reduce injury, obviously. And just like Tischler recruited former wrestling coaches to help sell their wrestling mats, Gilbert went after Roth, a former Division I gymnastics coach at Ball State University and an exec at another company in Texas. 
He tells us his industry experience does give him a little edge and that he knows what a coach is looking for, so they already have a bit of a jump start in developing a new product. You'll find Resolite's gymnastics products in gyms all across the country. The idea is to make products that help kids become gymnasts. So they're making products that will help them really develop their skills and provide the coaches with training products that get young athletes to a point where they become competitive gymnasts. Competition has always been a big part of Resolite's business in wrestling and gymnastics. It is the supplier of wrestling mats for the PIAA State Wrestling Championships each year in Hershey, and they've also done so in New Jersey, California, Florida, and Georgia. They've also been the official mat supplier for the NCAA Wrestling Championships at all three divisional levels since 1963. They provide six to eight mats depending on the division, and they work closely with the NCAA and ESPN on the mat design and color, using the NCAA logo in the center circle of each mat. One of the other things they make here at Resolite is the wall padding that you'll find in wrestling rooms across the country, and as you would expect, they offer different lettering and logo configurations. When we come back, we'll learn a trick from a local magician.